One of the biggest additions to Go and Go123 is the addition of iterators. As well as being a big change, they have also caused controversy because to some people, they complicate Go in non-trivial ways that affect the simplicity and ease of the language. There was a similar view that was shared when generics was introduced. I have my views, but I'll leave it up to you to decide. In this video, we're going to talk about what iterators are for and compare them to uh, previous Go versions to see how you may change the way you write Go uh, after they're released. So here's the draft release notes for Go123. And you can see that there's some more details of an iter package that which we can read about in the language spec. So let's jump into the iter package. Uh, provides basic definitions and operations related to iterating over sequence. So here we go. An iteration is a function that passes successive elements of a sequence to a callback function, conventionally named yield. The function stops either when the sequence is finished or when yield returns false, indicating to stop the iteration early. This package defines sequence and sequence2 as shorthand for iterators that pass one or two values. So uh, we have yield, which takes one thing and returns a bool, or it takes like a key value and returns two things. This is kind of confusing. So let's jump into an example and see how this looks. So on the left hand side here is a function written in Go122. I'm using the Go Playground here. So the left hand side is running the latest stable version of Go as of right now, which is Go122. And on the right hand side is the Go developer branch. So this can be unstable, but it does include all the Go123 changes. So I've got two really simple programs here. On the left hand side, uh, I have a function called backwards, which goes backwards through a slice um, and prints them out to the console. Um, it took me a while to write this one just because I'm not used to negatively stepping through a slice, if that makes sense. And I think it's one of the reasons that um, the Iterator could make sense in a moment, so we'll look at that in a sec. But if I run this program, you'll see that it does work and it prints hello world. Um, and what's happened here is when I've called this function, it's looped through the entire uh, slice and it's printed each of them, and I've had no ability to stop it. If this was an, a million um, item slice, I would have to print all a million things or terminate my program. I wouldn't be able to just take five or six of them and print them to the console. So on the right hand side, we have the same function, but written slightly differently. This backward function seems kind of confusing, but effectively, if we remember what we saw in the language spec is we have this uh, function, which we're gonna, uh, uh, which is our callback. And then we have this function, which we yield. So we, we still go backwards through the uh, slice and the function is returning true to let the caller know there's more data coming if you want it. When we finish, we return false, signaling we have no more data to give. Although the code is a little bit more complicated on the right, you can see the control we now have given to the user. Uh, we no longer have to wait for the whole function to terminate uh, or to print everything before we uh, proceed with our program. If I want to print just one element, I can do that. And the other thing is I don't have to print at all. I've got a lot more control in this function to do whatever I want with the, whatever was yielded by this backward function. So in this instance, I'm printing it. And if I run this, it will give the same response as the one on the left as you can see. But if I wanted to do something completely different with it, I could do that too. Um, and even though this backward function is kind of confusing, if you imagine this was in a different package, this piece here is actually very clean. So you could see like complicated uh, libraries or packages making use of um, functions like this and the iterator proposal to make the uh, API of programs being written to be much simpler. So I can see a world where the standard library maybe has a lot of this in it, uh, and maybe some uh, pretty complicated libraries that we may use could have some of this. But for the most part, I, I don't see too much of this being used in day-to-day in -day, uh, development, in my opinion. So why was this added? The Go team referenced generics as the reason for adding this, and they expect that they may see folks using these for things like traversing a tree or a linked list. I could also see them being useful for working with large files or data streams. There's a lot more to iterators, and this is just a high level overview. So I've left some links below that may, may help you if you want to dive a little bit deeper. But do not worry if you do not understand this. It's kind of confusing. Um, and as I mentioned, I, I don't think you'll see too much of this in the wild. And you can always dig into it at a later date when it makes sense. So I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.